dual opposing slides, center island kitchen, 10 cubic foot fridge, huge bunk room, and a fireplace. Folks, this is the Coleman Lantern 337BH. All right, folks, and for this one, we're gonna start off on one of the most impressive parts of the 337BH, which is the kitchen. If you're looking for a bunk model, but you want a lot of prep space, you want a lot of cook space because you like to cook while you camp, then this is one you have to pay attention to. Look at all the countertop space I have in this travel trailer. It is massive. And of course, part of that is due to the fact we have an island, which is something that's a little bit tougher to get in a bunk model. And of course, the big advantage of an island is the prep space as well as all the storage underneath. You can see this huge bank of drawers here, plus some more storage for pots and pans underneath that beautiful stainless steel apron front sink. And of course, this sink is undermounted thanks to the style of countertops we have. You'll see that this is a like a, a thermal foil countertop so it's an upgraded countertop and uh, better than a t-mold and lighter weight than a true solid surface but it still allows you to undermount the sink which not only looks nicer but of course is just better for general cleanings you can just wipe everything into the sink just like that high-rise faucet there also makes it a little bit easier to wash and rinse dishes now we'll get to the rest of the countertop space in just a moment but first i want to hit on this because this is a new addition for 2021 as well and that is the upgraded GE stainless steel 10 cubic foot 12 volt refrigerator and as you can see you have a ton of space in here a lot bigger than standard right a lot of times years ago you know you would get somewhere between like a six cubic foot sometimes a seven if you're really lucky an eight uh, but now in a, a travel trailer they're giving you a 10 cubic foot uh, 12 volt refrigerator the thing I like about 12 volt is that it runs off the battery so if you plan on doing some boondocking, if you have two batteries and enough solar power, you can run this almost indefinitely because it is a very low power drain, which is great. Otherwise, if you have shore power, plug it in, of course, you're good to go all day long. Uh, nice, easy travel lock there too, I will add. But coming over to the side, so this is the rest of, or not the rest, but the majority of the rest of our uh, prep space, right? So if you're not prepping on the center island, you have all this space right here. It also gives you a spot if you want like a coffee maker or margarita maker, something right there in the corner you can do it some usb ports to plug in electronics nice big window to let in natural light this window does open too which i like a lot of times the windows in a kitchen won't open the thing i like about this is if you're cooking something here now don't get me wrong uh, i've got called out on this before i love the smell of bacon my wife loves the smell of bacon however after it sits there and the smell sits in your camper for five six hours just starts to smell a little bit like grease so having the window right there as you're cooking just kind of help uh, get some of those smells out I love the fact that that does open. And again, as I mentioned, huge countertop space. Plus you get the extra prep space here with the recessed cooktop because it does have a glass cover. This simply folds up and back just like that. Kind of leans right against this backsplash. A new backsplash for this year too, I, I might add. Uh, you know, kind of a simple look. Looks uh, fairly easy to clean there as well. Three burner cooktop, the front one of course being high output, the knobs do light up if you're into the blue light look. And then underneath is an oven for baking. And just in case there wasn't enough storage in the uh, kitchen island, you can see that you have more storage there for pots and pans, plus more right there, spice rack all the way across the top and two very deep drawers for a lot of your hot pads, uh, kitchen, to, you know, hand towels, things like that. But just a ton of storage all throughout this kitchen. You'll also see some storage right up top, the frosted glass, microwave, and then of course a hood underneath. Now, right over here is kind of like your bar or, or um, like coffee area, right? So again, you have a little outlet over there, but you have another one here if you want your coffee maker here. Personally, I like to uh, imbibe a little bit when I go camping. So, you know, this would probably be my liquor bar, right? I line it up right here. I have my rocks glasses up here. Maybe, you know, some more uh, high shelf stuff up there, something like that. But obviously, you know, this can be just great storage or you can put some knickknacks there, some decor, whatever you want to do to make it yours. But it is a great additional space. And then again, just because, you know, why not have more storage? We have more storage right underneath there. So th for me, folks, this, I think they absolutely nailed it with the kitchen in the 337, just a ton of space all throughout here, both countertop space as well as storage space. Now we'll get to this in just a moment, but first I wanna come on back and check out the bunk room. So as we take a step in the back, 
uh, a couple things that uh, I really like about this one, and one of them is right over to this side. So you have the top bunk, 150 pound weight capacity on here, so you're probably not gonna fit most adults up there, but it's great for the kiddos. More importantly for me though, is underneath the fact that you have a dinette. And I really like having these in bunk models because it does give the kids another place to sit down. They can put a puzzle together, they can have a meal right back here. Um, you know, if they wanna draw, they can do something besides stare at a TV while they're inside, which I always try to promote anytime I can. If you know it is a rainy day and you want them to, be able to play on a tablet, something like that, you do have USB ports there. You'll have that uh, USB access basically in all the beds. Uh, of course, the LED light over there. If you take a look over the other side again, you see the USB port there, a window up top too. Now, if there is one area I think they failed, and this is very minor, and honestly, it could be because the time I am making this video, the state the industry is in. I know a lot of manufacturers are struggling to get supplies, so maybe that's why the situation is what it is. But as you will see, the, the mattress is oversized. It, it, it doesn't fit uh, down in there. And you can see that it is all the way up against the wall. So uh, for me, you know, that's if I had to say there was a fail to this, uh, this layout, this RV, this is probably it for me. Very minor thing. It's still obviously very usable. It's just, um, you know, I guess my OCD, this just bugs me a little bit that it overhangs. But moving on. You will see this one has the built-in ladder, so it does make it nice and easy to climb up into here. You have storage shelves all the way behind. Uh, area right there if you want a TV in here. Again, some drawers, so you have spots for the kids to put their underwear, their socks, all that good stuff. And then right over to the side, you have a spot to be able to hang kids' clothes up. So I love that you do have spots for kids' clothes because oftentimes that is an issue in the bunk room um, where you, know, you just don't have the storage. Also, you have the window in the back, uh, heat vent right down here, electrical outlet. It's also worth noting you have electrical outlets on the sides of the, um, the island there too. So let's talk about the super slide a second. So of course, the super slide really helps open up this main living space. Um, you know, when we're done, I, I will close the slide up so you can take a look in here. Now, I, I can tell you right now, uh, you know, it is going to shut some things off like the refrigerator, just not be able to get there. Uh, you know, probably the bathroom as well. So it's not going to be one that's great for traveling if you need to uh, access some different areas, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, the super slide has the U-shaped dinette as well as the jackknife sofa. Now, um, with the, with the U-shaped dinette, I'll take a seat in here. And you can see, of course, the great thing about this is I can easily sit three to four people here. Everyone can sit around. You know, you can drop the table down into a sleeping space where this can easily sleep to adults. And that part I really like. Now, one of the things that Coleman does, and uh, I've asked this before, and you know, I, I really love feedback. So let me know in the comment section what your thoughts are. So as this one stands right now, it is a U-shaped dinette. However, what you can do is you can remove these two cushions. This right here, this center section lifts up and out. And then you will see another peg back there. And what happens is the table will then spin. And instead of having a U-shaped dinette, you have a standard dinette. Um, I guess, let me know what your guys' thoughts are. Would you, do you see yourself using the standard dinette? Would you keep it as a U-shaped dinette? Do you find value in being able to switch back and forth? Uh, definitely let me know because again, I can pass that on to the manufacturer because if, if you don't see value in it, then you know maybe they can eliminate it and put the value somewhere else. If you do see value in it, let me know those circumstances so that way I can speak to it because I personally don't know that I would convert it uh, a whole ton. Right over to the side is the, the jackknife sofa. Now, great thing about a jackknife, of course, is obviously the sofa itself gives you a spot to sit, but a jackknife gives you lots of storage underneath. And the great thing about the Coleman is this right here. This just drops down, it's magnetic, so it's nice and easy to put back up. Makes it very easy to access things underneath there. What I have seen some people do is they will actually put totes in here that you can slide in and out. So it makes uh, some of those you know smaller items, it gives you good storage spots for them and you can access them easier. Or it just makes it a, a good spot for some of your larger items like you know extra bedding, pillows, things of that nature. Now when you're sitting there, you wanna watch TV, this of course is where your TV will go. Um, not a huge space here. Again, personally, I, I guess I wish they wouldn't have built this out so much and just had this whole wall so I could put a TV here, right, and have a larger TV. Um, not that you have to have a big TV when you're camping, but you know this is, this is going to be a little tough, in my opinion, for someone from the dinette to see. So you know, maybe if they would have just uh, you know, kind of built it or not had this top part, had this all the way flat, had this base part and then a fireplace, I think it'd still give you enough room to go around. But I don't know, again, my opinion, not a bad thing, just I like to have a bigger TV. 
you'll see that there your control panel, also your, um, excuse me, right here is your multimedia center. This controls the speakers inside as well as outside, Bluetooth capable there. Fireplace right down underneath. I do like the fireplace, uh, both from an aesthetic standpoint, as well as the fact it is a little space heater there. And you have some storage underneath. So if you wanna you know, kick your shoes off and store some shoes under there, some flip-flops, you can do that, as well as a little bit of additional storage right up top. Uh, and on, over to the side, I do definitely enjoy this, and that is the fact they have a spot to hang jackets and the fact that it is covered, right? And you know, I think that's kind of why they helped build this out too. So it gives you a spot to be able to hide uh, those jackets and other things. But let me know your thoughts on the entertainment center, folks. Do you think it's fine just the way it is because you know it does give you that additional hidden hanging space, or would you rather you know be able to have a spot for a bigger TV? Let me know. Coming into the bathroom here, you'll see foot flush lever toilet. Uh, as far as space, I have good shoulder space, good uh, space for my knees here as well. Neo angle shower. When I take a step into the shower, plenty of headroom there. You can also see I have good space to spin around in here. You know, I'm fairly broad shouldered and I have no issues at all. Storage above the toilet, I think that was a good move. Good use of space there. Spot to hang your towels. I like this too because it is accessible from the shower. Very easy to get to. Mirrored medicine cabinet right underneath. You have a nice big sink there. Plus some good additional storage space underneath. And of course, plumbing access. There's also a heat vent um, in the bathroom. I think that's something that's always important to note. So if it is a cold morning, um, there's a, an a AC duct, of course, as well in case it's hot. But you know, that way you can kind of control the temperature in the bathroom. You'll see right here is your door so you can close it off, give it a little bit additional privacy at night. You know, if you and the kids are going to bed at different times, you have the mirrored wardrobe on both sides. You can see the shelf going across the top, LED light there, really cool decorative wallboard, nightstands on both sides with drawers, electrical outlets, and USB ports. Uh, last couple things I do want to mention, one is right up top here. You'll see that you have a vent. More importantly, this is prepped for a second AC. So if you want a second AC in here, this one's 50 amp, you can have it installed. And then over on the far wall is a spot where you can mount an additional TV. Now that we've seen the insides, take a look at the outside of the 2021 Coleman Lantern 337BH. Right up front is a power tongue jack, and this, of course, makes it much easier to connect and disconnect from your tow vehicle, because rather than having to crank it up and down, you simply flip a rocker switch. Plus, there's a light for added visibility at night and a manual override in the rare event the motor fails, so you're not stuck at the campsite. Right behind that, two 20-pound propane tanks. You'll see rails here for your battery. And then tucked away right over there is solar prep. So if you want solar, all you have to do is just buy the portable panels, plug it in right there. Everything's already pre-wired, and that will start to trickle charge your battery. Coming right up the front is the diamond etch plating. Help to protect that front end from some of the rocks and debris that may get thrown up by your tow vehicle. And again, folks, with that solar, as I said, if you, you know, with that 12 volt fridge, if you plan on doing some boondocking, just pick yourself up another battery, get like, you know, a 150, 200 watt solar panel, plug it in right there, good to go. If we take a look inside, you will see the nice, big, open, pass-through storage space. It's one of the great things about the Coleman Lantern. Uh, a couple things on almost all Coleman Lanterns. One of them is they have big pass-through storage, another is big freshwater holding tanks. You're looking at a 60 gallon fresh tank on here. But uh, with this, you can fit some of those bigger chairs, grills, things like that in the storage area. And as I was talking about, your fresh water inlet's right there, big 60 gallon tank. This one also has um, your power stabilizer jack prep. So one of the things more manufacturers have been doing is trying to give you options. If you want the prep or if you want the, the power stabilizer jacks, great. You can have it added on there. All the wiring and everything's already pre-wired. Boom, simple and easy. If you don't want it, then not a problem. You can keep what you have right there and save yourself a little bit of money. Right up top is a power awning with LED light. Touch a button to roll it out. Same thing to go back in. You'll see a couple speakers right underneath that so you can listen to some music out here. Those, of course, are tied to that multimedia center inside. And then right down underneath, you'll see black tank flush to quickly and easily wash out the black tank. You'll notice this, of course, your electrical outlet in case you need to plug anything in out here and a campsite outside shower with hot and cold water access. This is something that's a little more rare. Usually it's on the off camp side, sometimes on the back of the RV, but this makes it great because what you can do is if you come back from the beach, boom, you can wash your feet off right here, dry them off before heading inside. You need to wash the dog, you can do that too. Or maybe you just need to, or you wanna do dishes out here because you just had a meal, you can fill up a water basin with hot water right there without having to go inside. 
Your entryway you will see has your solid steps by LCI. And just the name implies, folks, very solid. I'm over 200 pounds, gaining more weight every day it seems lately. Uh, but it does, uh, it is nice and solid to go in and out. You know, you don't see the steps flex. Aluminum treads on there so they won't rust, plus the grip tape. And of course you have adjustable feet as well. Making our way to the back here big outside kitchen space. I really like when manufacturers do this. Um, you know, this is for me one of the big selling points of having a bunk model is having the big outside kitchen and especially this. You get the larger refrigerator and you know I'm gonna fill that bad boy with a bunch of beverages and I'm gonna enjoy them right here outside so I love having the taller one. Additional storage right there. As I mentioned inside, I like to imbibe a little bit. If I want to uh, have some of that outside, I can fit some of my, uh, you know, fifths right up there too. Or maybe just want to put cups, plates, whatever else up there. You can do that as well. Good prep space here and electrical outlet. So if you want to put like an electric griddle or a toaster out here for breakfast, you can do that too. You'll also see a drawer. So you have a spot for flatware. Another one right over on the other side. So a couple different drawers. Of course, you have the sink in the middle and propane quick connects right there if you want to do some grilling it does have the arm mount flips up and around just like that you can put the grill on it plug it into that propane quick connect and you're grilling in no time or if you have your own grill already when you buy this camper you can of course use your own too but the fact it comes with the grill and the arm is just uh, an extra bonus there city water inlet will be located right back here uh, the only thing i guess i don't like about this is sometimes like my hose um you know because I, I don't always replace my hoses so sometimes it'll squirt out a little bit and you know with the grill right there i might get the grill wet have to swing that out and around super minor thing right just ian just replace your portable water hose i know i need to but that's where the city water uh, inlet is located right up top is your backup camera prep so that way if you want a backup camera having the prep makes it a lot easier to install meaning it'll save you money on labor cable inlet will be right in the back 50 amp power supply here uh, on the back side so that's where you'll plug your 50 amp into 50 amp of course because this one had the fireplace as well as the second ac prep if we drop down real quick last thing i want to show you is this right here so you will see that you have two different terminations you'll have this one located right in front of the slide and if you look in the very back behind the rear axle you can see there's a second termination right back there. All right, folks, and that wraps it up. Again, this is the 2021 Coleman Lantern 337BH. If you're interested in this wonderful family RV and you would like price and availability, simply click on the link in the description. Also in the comments section, let me know what you think they nailed, what they failed, and if you were designing this RV, what you would change. Thanks again for watching, folks. I'm Ian Baker, and let's go camping.